Hello Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles and we are with Kevin Shibita and then however everybody else says it, it's some better. <laughs> um, and we're in Michigan at the Palladium Open House. Uh, rare opportunity for me and uh, well from talking with Kevin this is maybe the last one? Yeah I think so, it's a, it's a ton of work and uh... We need more volunteers. Well, actually, we had, a, we had a really nice amount of volunteers this year, I have to say. It was, it was pretty cool. It, it is a lot of work. I've done enough events. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Rifts, Palladium, uh, maybe some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the rare known fact, um, well, a eh, couple of your ears, they love Star Wars. And we're, we're not talking about Star Wars, but <laughs> they love Star Wars. That's uh, true. And I, I walked around the office and I got some photos of some stuff earlier, and I'll, I'll share that stuff this weekend, I hope. Um, but we're also going to talk about the fact that Kevin actually started as an artist. Um, I has, I started playing in their whole game world stuff probably in the 80s. And I started with Riffs. And then somewhere before I graduated, we moved into the Palladium um, fantasy game. And like... There's a ballad in there that I really love. Um, there's some art in there that I really love that this guy actually did the art. So I'm like, oh, I didn't know that until I saw it on the wall. <laughs> um, so that's what brought you into this. Yeah, I, my, my original, this, this is all supposed to be temporary. Um, my original goal was to be a comic book artist and writer. Uh, I loved comic books and collected them for years and years, studied them, dabbled in it. I actually uh, I did uh, some work on the early Justice Machine for Mike Gustavich. Uh, I did some ghost work for Marvel Comics Defenders, uh, inking and doing some finished pencils. Um, so art was my first love. So where's that stuff hiding? Ah. <laughs> um, I don't actually have any of those pages, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. I think the artist... Marvel, Stan Lee... Wake up and get with it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's my background, and that's why uh, I think I connected with so many different artists. I'm just kind of visually oriented. So when I met Eastman and Laird, we just hit it off, and you know, and that's why I work really well with other artists. Uh, in fact, Eastman and Laird used to joke that I would get their best work out of them, and they were like, "Why don't we do our best work for ourselves?" And I'm like, "I don't know. You really need to come to Con and Con." It, it is in Hudson, or the, the Hudson, Ohio area. Uh -huh. Andy Hopp, who does has written the Savage Worlds game system um, and made several other board games on his own. That's his convention. Okay. He primarily started it for him to hang out with his artist friends. Oh, funny. Um, and it, it started it started as, hey, let's have a game day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it grew, and now it's around 1,000. So oh, nice. the 750 range. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in there. In I, I don't, I'm not saying come as like Palladium, um, you know, and take over a booth and that type of thing, but maybe some of your artists can come down with you for a getaway weekend. And, uh, maybe. Um, I, I think you would love it. It is. It, it's a guardy. It's a gaming party. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's right up your alley. So it, anyway, now that we've been sidetracked once, uh, um, let's talk with Palladium first. When we last talked, no, no, let's let's back up even a step. Let's talk about TMT. Um, new movies, new shows are coming out. Uh, I don't know who has the rights to those. Have you possibly approached anyone about more TMNT? It's funny you mention that because we actually th we thought about it, and uh, we might. Nickelodeon owns the rights. And oh, that would be huge. And it would be huge, and in fact, um, what's what's cool and, and, and shocked me is we actually got a call from Nickelodeon and said, "You seem to do Ninja Turtles." We have a bunch of guys used to play it and love it. Would you be interested in doing it again? Don't get too excited, because <laughs> the commitment was that they wanted from us was just too big for us at this time, especially if Robotech RPG Tactics. We'd have to focus oh, yeah. so much time and energy into doing TMNT. TMNT with Nickelodeon that we just felt like we couldn't couldn't take that on right now. But the door was left open, and we're definitely considering it for down the road. Yeah, I'm for hire. <laughs> I'm for hire. I don't have a great job. I'm for hire. And I can't write. <laughs> um, moving on. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Man, that's awesome. I, oh, yeah, I can't it, wait. It's, 
it surprised me. It, it was pretty cool. But uh, you know, it Nickelode wasn't April first, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Nickelodeon is a really, really big company, and they're very media minded. And so, like I said, it was a huge commitment oh, financially yeah, yeah. and time wise, and you know, they want us to hit deadlines and you know all that kind of jazz. And we'd have to work with their people. And um, so, for example, I don't know if I could hire you even if I wanted to. Um, and those are some oh, of the things that gave us right. some pause. And uh, but yeah, we're definitely thinking about it. We love turtles. We love Kevin and I, Pete. You know, I miss the whole thing of making my own mutants. I mean, I still have the book. I have right, the original right. book, but I, I miss it. And I can't seem. I don't know why I can't get my kids to want to play. I don't know. It's hotter than hell. It seems like everyone. Uh, the well, I, are blowing off my the kids, shelves. The movie we're, was we're huge. Little, we're a little bit removed from the world, seeing as how Netflix is our medium. Okay. We don't have cable. We decided that uh, Time Warner, sorry Time Warner, <laughs> I named you. Um, and it's not their fault that there's so many taxes right, and you right, know, right. all the things like Disney saying you have to charge this. But it's, yeah. it's not their fault. Um, but we just decided that $1,500 a year was too much for cable. With five, with five kids, with five of us in the family. Sure. Um, so we pay... A lot of people are going that way. Netflix and or Roku. stuff online. Roku is yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we just bought a Roku. And That's like, the new media, man. I'm like, wow. Um, so I guess we'll talk about fantasy. Because uh, I know that's your favorite. Yep. And at Gen Con, you mentioned there were some big announcements coming up, um, like an Ultimate Edition. Hmm. Um, how much closer are we? <laughs> Uh, well, we really have had our hands full of a bunch of other things. Like it's, it's some, Yeah. Uh, it's something I very much want to do in the next year or two. Um, then we've got some ideas I, I really can't pitch right now, but we've got some cool things that, that are boiling. So, But prior to that, you're probably going to see a couple of uh, different source books come out, including Land of the Dam 3, uh, The Citadel. Oh, well. so. That would be all good. Well, I guess that brings us to the new news of Rifts within Palladium Books. We'll, stay, we'll start there. Um, within Palladium Books, what are your plans for maybe the next six months? Or what's your big Gen Con release? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think we're just really trying to get out like the next three or four books. We want to get uh, Heroes of Humanity out for Rifts. We want to get the Disavowed out. That's also a Rifts book. Um, Rifts Chaos Earth, Resurrection. Um, those are the big three that we're looking to get out in time for uh, Gen Con. That's Rifts, and of course the other book we, we definitely will have out in time for Gen Con is uh, Robotech uh, Expeditionary Force Marines. Uh, people have been dying for that, and uh, we just sent the manuscript to Harmony Gold for their review, and uh, I've been signing out artwork, so that's coming along and should be out. Yeah, it's got to be fun to work with Harmony Gold. Uh, actually, you know, Harmony Gold gets a bad rap, I think. Um, I, they can be difficult at times, but I'll tell you, for with us, they've been quite loyal. They're usually very understanding, um, and they, they work with us. So I really have no complaints. That's, that's great. Um, I'm just thinking, like, I've heard horror stories about working with Paramount. Um, like, casting the Starship Enterprise one with a pewter model, apparently, was <laughs> not cool. Well, I mean, I think, you know, it depends, you know, any big business, they're going to have their layers of exactly. bureaucracy and things well, that need done, and you're going to deal with certain creative forces. And I think that's been one of the advantages with Harmony Gold, is that it's a, it's a comparatively small organization compared to, like, Disney or Paramount oh, or I didn't Sony. think they were small at all. Um, but well, compared to, to, okay. yeah, compared to the, you know, mega companies, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, we deal with a lot of the same people. There's not a huge turnaround. We don't have to, well, we do deal with legal. I was about to say we don't deal with legal much, but we do deal with legal. And even their legal department is, is very cool. I mean, they, they really work with us. So, um, yeah, they've, they've, been, they've been a good licensing partner for us. Which, I guess that brings us to probably what is some really big hype out there right now, which is Rifts in Savage Worlds. Um, how did that come about? It, you know, it's funny. It, it's <clears> one of those things where um, uh, Sean Patrick Fannin is uh, the lead writer behind it. He's actually been sort of the mover and shaker 
in that he loves riffs, he loves Savage World. And he approached me about five years ago about the possibility of a crossover. And I said, sure, I'd heard good things about Shane Hensley, who's the owner of uh, Pinnacle Entertainment. And uh, Shane, um, or Sean brought Shane over to introduce me at a, at a Gen Con, and we hit it off. And we discussed the possibilities, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. And then things just kind of sat out there. Uh, I think uh, people were just going through different things in their lives, and uh, about a year or so ago, um, they contacted me and said, so we talked about this, you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, let's do this. Uh, you know, I like the guys, I, I, I trust them, I think it's going to be a really good product, so... Well, I think it's going to be insanely good for the name, too. I mean, Savage World, I, I've never played Savage World, I've been toying around with it because I like to review, and... I've been toying around with it now for almost three years, breaking down and buying it, and that was actually what made it happen. Oh, interesting. I it bought it as soon as I saw Sean post that. I was like, drive through RPG right now. Yeah, well, and I bought the core rules. I've heard nothing but, but, but good things about it for years, and uh, like I said, I, I know and trust Shane, uh, like or, or Sean, and I, I, I like uh, Shane. I think they're going to do a good job. I get the feel they're going to, you know, make it Savage Worlds, but also keep the integrity of the Rift setting, and I think it's going to be oh, awesome. I think they will definitely do that. I mean, and that's one of the things that appeals to so many people about that setting is it's a sandbox rules system. Just right. Throw it anywhere and go with it. Yep. Um, so, are you going to do any Savage World stuff in house? Um, Slash Rift style. I mean, or is it all with Pinnacle? Um, right now, it's all with Pinnacle. Um, you know, that could change down the road, uh, don't know yet. Uh, we're actually fooling around, been fooling around with doing our own kind of, you know, new set of rules for Rift, something more streamlined, stuff that focuses more on character, you know, role playing and character and story than, than rules. Um, There's that's been, actually one of my friends, I, one of the guys I graduated college with, he and I go back and forth all the time about, um, system well that not, not just about but with every system whether it's a good system or whether it's a bad system um we always you know i, I he has a pet fee he has pet peeves i have pet peeves we all we we almost always end up arguing over the palladium book system as to whether or not it's a good system and the housing wise and we always come back to the one thing that kind of is a hang-up for i think especially for new players is character development is a little um clunky or not Clunky's not the right word. Um, well, it's definitely demanding. I mean, it typically takes a half hour to an hour to create that, a character. If you're experienced. And, and, and I think part of the problem there, too, is there's so many choices that people it is go through. And we take, uh, yeah, exactly. We don't know where to start. Um, all these things are cool. All these things are interesting. But which one do we pick? That, that's a big part and, of it. And I think it intimidates people somewhat. And, uh, and, and you know, the rules... I think they work for the most part. I just think, uh, you know, a lot of it is the kind of way people look at it. Some things are, are clunky, some things are a little... You get that in every system. You know, yeah, and, you know, it's time to, you know, take a, a closer look at it and see if we can streamline and smooth things out and make it interesting that, for a new generation. I would I would love to play test in that. I'll keep you in mind. Uh, that would be... Yeah, I would like that a lot. I can have a lot of fun with it. Let's see how far we get this one. What else can we talk about in Rift? Oh, there's all kinds of things. Uh, well, okay, you mentioned um, the, the three big books, and the one... Well, we actually have more than the three big books. I mean, I... I, I well, no, the, before Gen Con, the, there was those, one... Those, yeah. When you mentioned the names... The Disavowed? Or Heroes of Humanity? Both. Both. How do those play into Rift? Because I'm a little bit removed, and I'm not sure what... I mean, Disavowed, um, I'm guessing that has something to do with either the Coalition or yep. one of those groups. Yep. And those are guys that kind of went rogue. Well, it's kind of interesting because what it is is uh, Joseph Prosek II, the Emperor's son, is the guy who's kind of gone rogue. And he sits back and says to himself, you know, Dad's a patriot. I mean, he's a fanatic, but he's a patriot. Joe is more into power brokering and controlling things. He's much more methodical than Emperor Prosek. Uh, think what you want of Emperor Prosek, whether he's, you know, a, a Nazi or Certainly, he's a human supremacist, but he's got motives and, and reasons and logic behind it. Joe's more of an opportunist, and Joe kind of sits back and says, man, these enemies of the states, 
I understand that Dad doesn't want to use you know, babies or magic and all this. We can't condone this. But he basically creates sort of this, uh, he recruits these uh, zealots and uh, interesting characters. And so you actually have a situation where they do use magic. They, they do go to other worlds. They go to other parts of, the, of Rift's Earth. And if there's a potential enemy, he'll send in basically a suicide squad, which are the disavowed. And Very not nice. even the Emperor, not this coalition military, nobody knows this. It's, he's, it's totally Joseph Prosek with these rogue cells. And most of these trips are one way. So these guys go in and do the dirty work. If they get caught, the government can say, we have no knowledge of these guys. Honestly say, we have no knowledge of these guys. We would never condone it because they're working with a mage or a DB or whatever. Half the time, the mages and DBs who are working with the disavowed have no idea they're actually pawns of the coalition. Uh, in other cases, um, members of the disavowed team might uh, I mean, they're often uh, basically assassin squads. They'll force a mage or a supernatural being or a DB to uh, do their dirty work. You know, they'll force them to open this rift or we're going to kill your family or we're going to torture you until you do. Um, and then when they're done with this guy, they just throw him away or kill him and because uh, they don't like witnesses. And uh, most of the teams never come back. And the ones that do become kind of legendary within, you know, sort of the underground network. And uh, the trick of being one of the disavowed is uh, to know when to not come back from a mission. Um, and it's oh, of, wow. Yeah, retire yourself. That was good. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and the Heroes of Humanity, then, is probably the opposite. Well, the Heroes of Humanity, yeah, it, it's uh, very much a response to the Minion War coming to Rift's Earth. And Emperor Prosek sitting back and saying, wow, we're being invaded by a new demon plague, the first one in like 100 years. We need to nip it in the bud. And he makes this appeal to everybody, to, uh, well, specifically humans, but everyone to stand together. And uh, so that creates an interesting thing where, while the coalition does not officially condone magic or tolerate DBs, they're going to turn a blind eye because they have a much greater evil threat to, to, to deal with. And so they have this common enemy. And so you are going to have a situation where, you know, characters that could not normally associate with the coalition and vice versa will work together, perhaps grudgingly, perhaps distrustingly, but they can work and do work together to fight this greater enemy. It's going to be fun. And in, in, in a lot of ways, too, I mean, part of the pitch is, depending on who you are, the coalition really is a hero of humanity. I mean, they fight for the human race. Pretty much, yeah. And, you know, if you're some human in a little town and these demons are attacking and you've got Samus screeching in and you know, blows the snot out of them, they're a hero. Now, if you're a DB, after the mess with the, the demons and finish them off, they might turn around and blow the snot out of you. That's but, right. Yeah. You know, it's uh, that's the coalition. That's the way it works. Yeah. Um, so that gets us through to Gen Con. But anyway, I think that's good. We'll save everything else for Gen Con. Um, and then we're going to go to, we're going to cut here, take a short break, and come back and we're talking about RPG tactics. Or Robotech RPG tactics. Uh, and hopefully that's a good story. See you guys later.